Hi, my name is Maggie, and this is me in fourth grade. When I had just moved from Hong Kong to Texas, I was wide-eyed, acclimating to a culture I was brand new to. And this is Ms. Sha, my fourth grade teacher who advocated for me when I needed extra support, when I felt lost, disconnected, and inadequate to master class assignments like in American history. She was an anchor in a time of change, and her dedication to all our success became an inspiration for me to be an advocate for children's education, especially for those who find themselves in a time of transition. 20 years later, I unexpectedly walked into a meeting and reconnected with her. She was now a principal and the board chair of the education department within the immigrant-centered nonprofit where I worked. She was unapologetic still in her advocacy for children's well-being, and it was something that she had really instilled in me deeply through her care. So when an influx of asylum seekers in New York began servicing on the news, I couldn't help but think about the families with children who braced themselves for the long journey as they fled political, social turmoil in their home countries and traveled here. Today, over 180,000 of these individuals pass through New York City. Families and children represent 78% of the asylum-seeking population in New York City's funded shelters. These numbers accumulated to over 36,000 students who have enrolled in public school since September of 2022. While integrating immigrants and refugee students isn't new to New York, the rapidly changing landscape among government policies affecting asylum seekers made their, made their lives quite uncertain. Particularly, children may go through education disruption, adjustment to new environments, and legal vulnerabilities that cause housing and food insecurity. For children, schools can be a place of stability. However, Perhaps those schools may be too overwhelmed themselves and have not received the help they needed in a time of abrupt change. Carrying the question, how has the enrollment of asylum-seeking students impacted schools? I partnered with PS130 in Manhattan, a pre-K to fifth grade school led by Principal Fong and two assistant principals who graciously showed me the wonderful world of elementary education. It's located in the heart of Manhattan's Chinatown near a temporary shelter just a few blocks away. The school has a robust art program and is equipped to serve its local community through bilingual programs that offer instructional support in the Chinese language. In January 2023, within a week's time, more than 50 asylum-seeking families with young children knocked on the doors of PS130 to be enrolled. Educators rose to the occasion to provide safe spaces within their schools as they set up welcome rooms and adapted their roles in response. Currently, the school has about 585 students with 56 students from asylum-seeking families who predominantly speak Spanish. While almost half the teachers are certified to instruct English as a new language, the three Spanish-speaking teachers had to take on a significant amount of responsibility to communicate with families and children. From talking with teachers and surveys, um, teachers rated below average when asked if they felt equipped or had access to relevant resources to support these students. Teachers felt caught in between wanting to know these students more to help them, especially for those who were behind up to four grade levels and teaching the rest of their class. Schools were also affected by lack of funding to hire staff for English learners or just struggled to find bilingual teachers due to shortages. Fostering a school environment that is equitable needed a different approach. Around the same time, I started volunteering at the school's after school program designated for kindergartners and first graders from asylum seeking families, where I taught art lessons alongside two teachers. I think about them now as they're at their last after school class of the semester as I speak. Students engaged with new vocabulary, with hands on activities, with enthusiasm as it gave them opportunities for self expression and movement. They especially enjoyed correcting our Spanish. We were connecting because of our language barriers. This small group setting enabled us to catch the nuances in our interaction, deepening understanding and trust between each other. While there are challenges, there was also deep joy. It was an invaluable time of discovering the students' strengths and interests little by little each week while we incorporated those in future lessons. One of the key insights was realizing how the social emotional well-being of students is intricately tied to their ability to learn and connect with others, affecting their confidence and sense of identity. Teachers wanted specialized support that addressed the students' relational, educational, and social emotional needs, like resources to help build friendships, materials in native language to build content, 
and opportunities to lift these students out of hiding behind language barriers. So I wondered, what tools can help address these learning focuses in school? Taking what I've learned from after school program, I held a lesson with a class of eight students where a Spanish speaking student is integrated with general students. We read an illustrated book called Platanos Are Love by Alyssa Reynoso Morris that highlights Latin American culture through food and family legacy. The text interweaved Spanish and English just as a conversation between multiple generations might have it. By gamifying the literacy portion, students race to identify words to complete a sight words rainbow. The lesson completed with an art activity that tied back to the story, adapting a food that reminded them of home into the book's title. From rice to pasta to papas fritas, each student showcased what reminded them of family love. The success and engagement of this activity opened up the potential for scaling up, scaling up such similar lessons. I began piling a list of books that reflected children's um, various cultures, sought recommendations from children's bookstores, and incorporated other elements that would help support a learning environment where all students felt seen and motivated to contribute, all of which culminated to The Language of Us, a student book-based art initiative that supports asylum seeker students with academic and social emotional support through guided lessons and activities that meet grade standards and address the multifaceted aspects of childhood development. The vision is to bring diverse children's book stories to life while providing hands-on art projects where students can engage with their own lived experience. Lessons can be nested in an existing after-school program or used as lesson plan in the class. By providing a flexible structure, teachers can save time planning, focus on observing progress, and build deeper relationships with children. Children's book make a great anchor for curriculum, not only due to its vibrant colors and lyrical writing, but a 2020 study revealed that the use of narratives in teaching foreign languages can actually lower the levels of anxiety, allowing students to take risk in language classes thanks to the relaxing learning environment generated by storytelling. In addition, children's book expose young readers from 500 to 1,000 words between ages 4 to 8, providing content for language comprehension and word recognition. Utilizing children's books as a teaching material is also a way to show solidarity by drawing attention to diverse cultures, diffusing the fear of the unknown by fostering curiosity, and giving students the opportunity to take ownership of their narrative. This resource includes an online index of children's, diverse children's books that have been categorized for an efficient navigation, lesson plans with worksheets and printables that cover a semester-long program as needed, with themes focused on their sense of self, family, community, awareness of nature and animals, and the world. Additional materials include affirmation cards, rewards, and just to keep the students encouraged in their learning. We piloted Unit 1 and focused on the importance of their unique names. After book reading, we asked these students to write their name prominently on a poster, enabling us to observe their writing skills. The session concluded with an art project using press flowers to, and to strengthen their language the letter comprehension. This lesson led to discussions about their nicknames that were given by their families, where we had a chance to affirm their identity and uniqueness. I felt immense gratitude to be a part of this foundational learning moment as we persisted to bridge gaps in their interrupted education. Somewhere between the mess up and cleanups, we are already seeing these students grow in confidence in, in who they are and in their abilities. Providing consistent opportunities has been the key to fostering growth enabling these students to flourish. Centered on joy, celebration, and connection, all the content um, in the language of us encourage inquiry, problem solving, and collaborative actions by drawing out identity, creativity, and peer interactions. The idea is that using storytelling and art with the support of educators, counselors, children's literature professionals, and volunteers as a tool for academic and social emotional learning would increase small group instructions, meaningful interactions between teachers and students that unveils and celebrate their identity, would give insight to build specialized resources for targeted learning, and add to teachers' joy and fulfillment in teaching, which would lead to more inclusive and learning spaces within schools. The future of this initiative is to expand the online database of lessons and to make it more accessible to educators widely. It is also to work with community members and illustrators to create teachers' briefings that provide a better understanding 
of personal anecdotes um, of students' context and culture. Despite ongoing challenges, teachers have found moments that motivated them deeply as they shared how the students have changed their worldview, renewed their joy in their work, witnessed the power of acceptance, and inspired new ways to make learning more engaging. It is my hope that the language of us can show us how the function of art is to do more than tell it like it is, but to imagine what is possible. Thank you. <laughs>